The timing asks, brings to light a ton of questions, Junior. Yeah, a ton of questions about, all right, the validity of what Mark D'Antonio is telling us now, that he is truly stepping away to take time with his family and all this. When it comes a day after this, when it comes not long after Mark D'Antonio picks up a $4.3 million retainer bonus in his contract, all of these things that unfortunately in the world that we live in now in modern college football and quite frankly with everything that has transpired for Michigan State as a program and certainly the impropriety that's followed this football team in the last run of years makes it extremely difficult to believe. It makes it, ex- yeah, I, I, I don't know how many people actually believe it, quite honestly. Th- this is such... Bad timing and the timing of this, I, I can't even fathom. Understand what took place. This The second signing period is today. Now, that, that, is, signing day. that is a lesser day because of the early period that's been going on for a couple of years. That's in December where the, where the multitude of signees signed. But still, how many players signed to Michigan State on that day and now, you know, a month and a half later, the guy they signed with that thought that was going to coach the team isn't coaching the team. And And – from a business aspect, I'm sure everybody can understand if you have to be around till January 15th to collect $4.3 million, a lot of us are going to do that. Okay, let, let's not go overboard and say, you know, where's the morality in that, you know, and maybe he should have left. If he knew we wanted to leave, he should have left before that. 4.3 mil is 4.3 mil, and, yeah. and that was the deadline for it. I hear you, Mike, on that. We, we don't have to um... – we don't have to get on our high horses about whether or not we would have done right, it before right. your four and a half million dollar payday, but it does allow us to go. What are your real motivations here? Comple- you, I mean, completely agree. Exactly. You just had some self reflection after getting your four well, and a half million dollar check and go. You know what? He said, and he said February was the month every year that he kind of goes over in his mind if he, you know, where where he's going, which again seems extremely odd to be an extremely because. This our early signing period is just a couple of years old. He's been there 13 years. All those other years, this is the actual signing date when you're signing your 20 to 25 recruits. So you're saying February is a month you decide whether you're going to stay or not? Every year. When, when you're getting these guys <laughs> to come to your school and then uh, supposedly over the, you're deciding well, if you're even going to be the coach right after all these guys sign? In the middle of winter workouts? I mean, come on. Like, we're back on campus clanging yeah. and banging at that point. Like, we're in the weight room doing everything, and you're just deciding now that you want to be a part of this or not? Every like, year. Don't you understand this, guys? Every, every year. year, right around signing day is the time for self-reflection. I, I, so, so say, am I in his for the long run? So day? is this getting ahead of the... The, the lawsuit um, that that is by, or the wrongful termination suit by uh, one of the recruiters there and, and saying that D'Antonio had done some illegal recruiting. And then we heard about the, the player he brought in that had the sexual assault issues and then went on and did that and is in jail for it. So uh, is this a way to get ahead of that? Well, he was asked about that. He was asked on whether or not this lawsuit is the reason for his resignation. Mark, uh, what factor, if any, was <clears throat> the lawsuit and the deposition and potential fallout from that? Zero. No relevance whatsoever. Zero. No relevance. And of course, whatsoever. what's he going to say, right? No. I mean, he's certainly not going to not going to say it did. But this is a guy who we remember when all of this was going on with these allegations first coming out. You had Tom Izzo, who you talk about cornerstones. Yes. Tom Izzo is the face of Michigan State yes. in so many ways. Coming out defiant, defending Mark D'Antonio, saying you know all that he supports him in his entirety in all this, and so this has been met with force in the other direction. I I just can't get over how odd. This month is to do it, and then to hear this was his reflective month every year. I mean, it's just so bad for a program. Not like there's a good time to step down, but this is a horrible time to step down. It's Golden Kawingo presented by Progressive Insurance. Drivers who switch and save pay an average of $796 less per year. Call or click today and find out if we could save you hundreds on your car insurance. Will Kane filling in for Trey Wingo today, talking about Mark D'Antonio's resignation from Michigan State, essentially the day before National Signing Day. Um, I think we are doing the right thing by having a skeptical conversation about his motivations. I want to ask you guys this, though, moving forward. I've talked about this on the Will Cain Show several times. Grouping college football programs into sort of a country club membership, blue blood type program, the middle class programs. What is Michigan State now as a job opening? Is that one that a guy like, say, P.J. Fleck, who's at Minnesota and is achieving at a high level, would be interested in? Or is that not a big enough step up for P.J. Fleck? I I said this yesterday. I I said – 
two years, you know, two years ago before back-to-back seven and six seasons at Michigan State when we were talking about this as a college football playoff team, you would have probably said, yeah, Michigan State, especially in my college football lifetime. I got to Notre Dame in 2008, Mark D'Antonio's second year there, and what he had built in that time was a consistent identity yes. within the Big Ten of what you understood you were getting with that program. That no longer exists now. So, no, I don't think there's any incentive for a guy like P.J. Fleck. I think you're talking about a completely different class of guys like Pat Fitzgerald at Northwestern. You're looking at the group of five. Um, so, wait, wait, Pat Fitzgerald moving on from Northwestern to Michigan State? That, that would be a move. That, that, would be a, that would be a move up. But for a guy like P.J. Fleck, you have got a lot of time, resources, and they just paid you a lot of money at Minnesota. You just showed this last year. You were competitive in ways people didn't think possible. P.J. Fleck's next move is going to be a program that is markedly bigger than what Michigan State's yeah. footprint is right now. Looking at, I know you mentioned Luke Fickle. That, that's probably the one who did literally the Mark D'Antonio path, defensive coordinator at Ohio State, two years as Cincinnati's head coach, and then moved on to be Michigan State's head coach. It's eerily similar. Now, let's uh, D'Antonio, let's give him his due. In his 13 years area, won three conference titles, three division titles, while uh, taking the through the most successful area. They went to a bowl game in 12 of his 13 years. Now, again, you need six wins to go to a bowl game, so you know let's we won't get too crazy on that, but. Their most successful time was was through him in that longevity. But I agree with Mike. I don't think it's the program that it was anymore. Um, so I, I'm not sure what coach they'll get plus what coach they'll get. I mean, as Mike yeah, said, at I this mean, point in the year, we're, we're into off season. Pro- we're a month away from spring and ball. By the way, a scandal ridden program. And, and, yes. and, and I can say their best exactly days right. are not ahead. And also part of this was. D'Antonio was kind of told maybe you have to get rid of some of your staff. So right now they're within with with Trestle uh, taking over as the interim coach right now. But what does that mean going forward? If you sign a coach from outside the program, is that coach going to want to bring in his assistants? Where are those assistants? Do they have jobs right now? Do they not have jobs? And then you you got a whole new system going right before you got spring ball. And, and oh, by the way, you just signed what about 25 guys who thought they were going to be playing for D'Antonio who now, now won't be. So, you know, imagine what – I'm not sure well, what the rule is on that, but, but will that, oh, that portal be active? Well, I can say, but what can they even do at this point? Because we are at signing day today. Scholarships, Scholarships are, full. are full, right? There's no place for these kids to go at this point. I'd make- we're so glad you're watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, make sure you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you there.